Namaste, and welcome to our continuing series, Explorations in Savitri, with our beloved Alambai. Namaste. Today we continue Book 3, the Book of the Divine Mother, Canto 4, The Vision and the Wound. And we are on page 343, uh, just at the top. Pretty yes. Yes. I just thought we'll just spend five minutes and read a passage. Good. It's a three-page uh, note by Shurabindo on the Sikh Gurus. Now, we know that something is going on in that area, both something beautiful and something, an effort to once again drag the entire movement towards uh, something very dark, yes. And, uh, you know, we were talking about the Shurabindo's installation of Shurabindo's relics and within a couple of months, yes, yes. the demolition of the yeah. Babri Masjid. There is another incident which took place with the installation of, closely connected with the installation of relics. So I was during that time posted in Patiala at the peak of militancy, you know, soon mm. after Blue Star, there was curfew after seven and still we would go and work in the center for almost uh, till near nine o'clock. And almost it was an everyday thing because after 7 p.m. you can't travel. You can't be out. So I'll come on scooter. The inspector will stop me. I'll show my wing commander or the squadron leader card. And he will say, you know, you sir, please just get down on the scooter and walk a few steps. That kind of state. And a terrorist actually came and threatened when we were wanting to celebrate the 15th of us that, you know, uh, we have heard and if something happens, don't blame us. So we said we are uh, Mother Kali's children and we are going ahead. What you have to do, you do. What we have to do, we'll do. So they came and we had the celebration. And uh, six of them came. Then after some time, they went away. We didn't call any police protection. Though we mm. were, you know, asked to call by all the wise men who talk and sleep. <laughs> call the police. We said, if, if the Lord cannot protect us, what police will protect but I suppose it depends that time, you know, that fervor and faith, we said, we don't care. Uh, maybe also that Air Force blood and, you know, you feel like, so they went away. One, the main person who had come to threaten actually became a devotee. Mm -hmm. Then, uh, militancy continued. Then, uh, when Shrivindu's relics came finally to that place, uh, that story is also amazing because the car ran for um, nearly, must be about, 50 kilometers without uh, any petrol in it. This, this, these are facts. I am not going into detail. The, the driver who came, he, uh, he just babaji some, you know, relics. So they were kept inside. And then after some time, he rushed into the place where the relics were ke <laughs> was kept. And he said, <laughs> "Where is babaji's?" Uh, so people said, "Okay, he's, he did <laughs> matha tekna, you know, as they say." Then says, what happened suddenly? He says, you know, I just realized my petrol uh, pipe has been cut. And, you know, from Delhi, I've been feeling something is amiss. So I just don't know how we have reached. So he was so full of... <laughs> yeah, this is a real living miracle witnessed by many persons. But the best part was that the relics were installed. Within 15 days, 700 plus militants surrendered. And that was the end of militancy in Punjab. So, you know, it is something very special. And here is Shobindo speaking about, uh, you know, India is like a triangle and he speaks about the way spiritual consciousness has been seeded and it was kept alive even during the peak of, you know, the subjugation of India to different uh, rulers. So he says, in the three corners of this triangular peninsula have risen three great cultures close towards the decline of the Mughal rule. Maharashtra awakening of the south, the Vaishnava revival of the east, and the Sikh culture of the northwest. Each has its distinctive feature and an element to add to the national store of spiritual culture. Ramdas and Tukaram and a host of other mighty spiritual giants created in Maharashtra by their tapas, a great self-conscious Hindu nation which it was given to Shivaji to organize and lead. Vaishnavism brought a flood of love which rolled like a sweet torrent of nectar over Bengal and penetrated even beyond the Vindhyas into the south 
with Sri Chaitanya. In the Panchnad, Panchnadi that is Punjab, the sacred land of the five rivers, Guru Nanak cemented the hearts of the Hindus and Muslims in the name of Alak Niranjan, and this laid another foundation stone to the mighty edifice of Indian nation building. And then he goes on to say it's a very powerful passage. Maybe in January, Tuesday, Hall of Harmony class we'll read. But just to come to one one small passage, he speaks about the gift of the Sikh culture. He speaks of all the cultures and the gifts. The greatest gift of the Sikhs to the nation is their firm rooted Guru Bhav. In the midst of the diadem of Sikh culture, like a ring of Kohinoors, stands the stands the cluster of mighty gurus. Now Kohinoor, of course, we know that it was the great uh, Sikh warrior Maharaja Ranjit Singh who had the diadem. It was he who had. You know, it was gifted away. Then he once again got it. Then finally, the Britishers just carried it away. So it was like a ring of coinures. So look at it. He's saying India had not one coinure, <laughs> the real coinures, which were like clusters. Really, the intense and solid line of spiritual power which Guru Nanak founded in the heart of the Sikh sub nation is unexampled in any history of any nation. Hmm. He has spoken of the Sikh society as the first attempt to create a spiritualized society. And they use the word Sangat. And they are very simple doctrines like, you know, uh, share everything. In, if you go to a Sikh Gurudwara, there is a langar going on. And at time, anybody comes, he can walk in and he eat. No questions asked, no money to be paid. Rich, poor, everybody comes, sits on the floor and eats. It's a very beautiful thing to, you know, uh, practice. Sikh history rings throughout with the glorious war cry, Sri Vaheguru Ji Ki Fateh. That history is a splendid record of the heroic careers of the great Gurus. Nowhere else do we find or hear of any such brilliant record of a whole nation growing round one central chain of spiritual personalities with unbated, unabated faith an unfaltering consecration from its day of startup to the present day. So, you know, it's something very beautiful and something uh, from everywhere we can draw inspiration. And you know how Shardindo speaks of the heroic saints and sages. So, saints and sages were not just people sitting in meditation. This concept that has come, you know, and turning everything into a ultimately a meditation center with an inner life. They were heroic people. And imagine getting the tribute from Shirovindo, <laughs> what it means. <laughs> and yet, we come back to what is yet undone. <laughs> so, <laughs> while remembering the past, we must move towards the future. And that future, Shirovindo reveals to us what is yet to be done. So, all this, their blood, their sacrifice of masters and heroes and avatars down the ages, not just millenniums. If you go by Indian record of history, pralayas, yugas, chatur yugas, there have been six of them. And that's where Sri says one place very interestingly, in this chatur yuga at least, the mantle of, you know, holding the flame is with India. In this chatur yuga, we don't know what happened in the previous one. Some of these cycles have been worked out in probably other planets, passingly should be the mentions. So it is in Indian record of history is amazing, you know, when you go into <laughs> real past. So we continue on page 343. This strange, irrational product of the mire, this compromise between the beast and God, this is us. Strange, irrational product of the mire. Basically, dust and mud has evolved into man. Very irrational because dust has none of the components that man has. This is a big question that science grapples with. The missing links in terms of the evolutionary leaps. 
there is no consciousness it's called the gap of understanding you know you are explaining something on the basis of something else which does not contain like dust if we go strictly scientifically well in shurbindo's vision it contains within it consciousness that's why it can evolve it contains within its mind life but otherwise if you see strictly scientifically there is no life in matter we are taught living and non living and yet life springs forth there is no mind in dust and yet mind springs forth there is apparently no consciousness yes consciousness springs forth so irrational he rational if you consider the strictly material formula in the, in the christian faith we have the line uh, ashes to ashes and dust to dust yes it's famous lines of umar khayyam also <laughs> dust and to dust and under dust to lie sans wine sans song sans singer sans scent <laughs> so this is how it has been and yet man has emerged this compromise between the beast and god shubhend at another place says he has few impulses of a god man <laughs> largely nature is driven by the operating system installed in it software with the coming of animal creation so our cells still react to fear to rage to anxiety immediately but they don't react to peace to joy to the healing vibrations to harmony that is a big challenge in healing by spiritual ways because it's not just about uh, use the word pushing consciousness into the cells the cells don't want to receive they shut the doors <laughs> they shut the doors <laughs> they shut prematurely <laughs> even god is kept out so this is the problem because the cells react immediately to fear to anger to uh, animal you know reactions this compromise between the beast and god is not the crown of thy miraculous world this world is a miracle where do we want to see a miracle a little seed becomes a mighty tree a little gene turns into a hero and a sage what more miracle do we want to see it's an everyday miracle i know there shall inform the inconscient cells at one with nature and at height with heaven a spirit vast as the containing sky look at the now cell built largely by inconscient little bit of matter within it small little it's i mean you can't even measure the size <coughs> it goes into microns and what will be filling it he is saying i know and this cell one with nature and at height with heaven a spirit vast as the containing sky this is the miracle for which we await which is going to happen here we have <coughs> so deeply we can hear sri arbindo's voice he says on the previous page i know yes. that thy creation cannot, cannot fail. fail and again he says now i know they shall inform the inconscient cells and then come these two marvelous slides yes. and swept with ecstasy from invisible founts a god come down and greater by the fall taking a human birth will be a glory when the supramental is established here even the gods will covet it right now they don't want because it's uh, you know becoming a human means restricting even when the gods are born in a human form they experience the extreme degree of limitation they are put in jail they can't operate based on their you know apple software because the apple has been eaten and man is here losing his celestial powers but to go beyond the gods you have to take the touch of this clay and when this clay itself is supramentalized imagine for the gods to come down from their high heavens will actually be a heightening and greatening of all that they can experience it's a direct contact with the supreme 
which is not possible even for the great God. So it's Once uh, Arvind Basu gave an entire lecture on that line. Yes. A God come down and greater by the fall. Yes. There are several layers in this line. Yeah. <clears throat> A power arose out of my slumber's cell. Abandoning the tardy limp of the hours and the inconstant blink of mortal sight, there where the thinker sleeps in too much light. You know what is known as susupti. Susupti is susupti, is the, it's a, not the highest, but almost after that you have the turiya where all these three layers are together. Something you can't speak of. But susupti is where none of our normal operating consciousness can remain awake. Mental consciousness will register nothing. You come back from that trance and there is nothing which you recall. Because you can't. But when the mother came to Shurbindo, met him, she said, what is this thing in India that people call trance? Where they become totally unconscious of the material world and everything, even of the inside, when they come back, they experience bliss, but nothing else. I have never experienced it. And Shurabindo says, nor have I. And then he says, because we could remain conscious all through, at all the planes together. It's an impossibility. I mean, up till now, to be in the trance of bliss and the supermind, even a touch of it, not, of course, no one enters the supermind, but even if you just have a glimpse of it, you can't remain conscious of this material world and it's going on. But the Divine Mother says that, you know, she was conscious even of the ticking of the clock, the thoughts of people around, their movements, yeah. even while she was in the highest state. Very often she would go in trance, sometimes with her hand kept on someone. Mm -hmm. And people have recalled, yes. um, Amyodha was here and he used to tell um, this... Um, what was his name? Brother of this Ganguly's, not uh, Robida, one more, uh, anyways. So he would tell me, he said, once, you know, mother kept her hand on my shoulders. She was to give the flower and suddenly she went into trance. I was just leaning like this. So I said, it must have been, what if? He said, yes, 45 minutes of bliss. I was hoping she does not come out of this state. <laughs> it's a, I mean, super ecstasy, just imagine. And this was quite uh, often, she would suddenly in the middle of a sentence, this she used to have even as a child. She recalls an incident where she was having food and she was told by her mother, physical mother, now you see, behave well. Because the counsellor is coming, means the like our collector sahab. So mayor is coming, you please, you know, don't go into one of your... So she lifted the fork, fork and midway. Suddenly she found the whole site very amusing. <laughs> and she went into that state. But she would remember everything that is happening. She never had that kind of trance where she loses contact with earthly reality, which we will find throughout in Shurabindos. Even in Savitri, in the highest state also, there is a connect and a link. And often mother would get a call from someone. Yes. When she went into trance and she would come to help them. Yes, that also she has mentioned that, you know, someone called and so many times the calls would come. Most of the time she would do it in a universal consciousness. But sometimes it was a special intervention. There where the thinker sleeps in too much light, and intolerant flames the lone, all-witnessing eye, hearing the word of fate from silence heart in the endless moment of eternity. It saw from timelessness the works of time. Now, when Sri is describing of the, the vision he has had from that, that plane, where the thinker sleeps in too much light, he is not saying, I saw. Because there is no I. It saw. It is Shurabindu who has seen. But Shurabindu in that state, 
where the thinker is asleep there is no more any kind of identity that you can ascribe and he remembers what he has seen the whole plan has been disclosed to him so maybe you know you can it saw from timelessness the works of time overpassed with the leaden formulas of the mind overpowered the obstacle of mortal space the unfolding image showed the things to come and this passage i cannot break up so i'll read it full and then you can take my my yes yes a giant dance of shiva tore the past there was a thunder as of words that worlds that fall earth was all run with fire and the roar of death clamoring to slay a world his hunger had made there was the there was a clangor of destruction's wings the titan's battle cry was in my ears alarm and rumor shook the armored night i saw the omnipotence flaming pioneers over the heavenly verge which turns towards life come crowding down the amber stairs of birth forerunners of a divine multitude out of the paths of the morning star they came into the little room of mortal life i saw them cross the twilight of an age the sun-eyed children of a marvelous dawn the great creators with wide brows of calm the massive barrier breakers of the world and wrestlers with destiny in her lists of will the laborers in the quarries of the gods the messengers of the incommunicable the architects of immortality into the fallen human sphere they came faces that wore the immortal's glory still voices that communed still with the thoughts of god bodies <coughs> made beautiful by the spirit's light carrying the magic word the mystic fire carrying the dionysian cup of joy approaching eyes of a diviner man lips chanting an unknown anthem of the soul feet echoing in the corridors of time high priests of wisdom sweetness might and bliss discoverers of beauty's sunlit ways and swimmers of love's laughing fiery floods and dancers within rapture's golden doors their tread one day shall change the suffering earth and justify the light on nature's face in powerful passage actually <laughs> and we got to speak after such a wonderful passage and i think we missed a line so i'll take up from there in the endless moment of eternity it saw from timelessness the works of time so all is revealed the entire plan so if somebody would ask from shirobindo how do you know that the supramental is going to come he has explained at places the logically and every which way but he could simply say well because i saw it <laughs> from where did you see it from that point which is outside creation outside time from where you see the unfolding of time you know that's how it is yeah. that one day of the gods is equal to a million years on earth 
so it it implies that that they live in vast spaces of time you see there is a point where space and time begin to collapse and merge that's why when you measure huge distances of space you measure in terms of the distance traveled by light the speed mm -hmm. of light you see it in physically there is a point where they begin to even physically it's impossible to conceive that boundlessness of space so you bring in that factor that how much time travels you know traveling through time so that's how at one place shrivindo when he describes uh, in the greater mind huge time loops emerging from eternity eternity so he is seeing the cycles of creation merge and go back what that seeing would be he describes that i intolerant flame of that eye from which he is watching the works and very rarely he speaks of himself yeah even in savagery yeah and Everybody. in life divine he'll say it might be yes. this might come <laughs> all through in synthesis also the only place you will find in shubindo's early works where he does use the word i a little bit is secret of the vedas yes and that's because he's describing that when i came here people spoke of the aryan dravidian but i myself didn't find any difference i could see that and he compares the physiological structures so we should be very careful something which shrubinder has repeatedly insisted that there is no difference so we as their children should not try to create a difference by you know oh these people and that people it's a very and i personally feel that uh, since we are at it that you know people of tamil nadu are blessed and i feel eternally grateful to those who gave land to shirbindo and the mother i mean for that one deed <laughs> uh -huh. yes. 10000 things can be kept aside and there is so much bhakti in the heart you know which we don't sometimes recognize so from that plane he is watching the unfolding we see in small little sections of time but we see today also so many tamil people go oh. open to mother come and tell you and the bhakti that they have is oh. something just simply too good yes. i have interacted yes. with many of them it's like when they speak of mother no sometimes one i have seen in odisha odisha it's like a mass movement and here when they speak of ma it's like they can't utter anything else because they are so overwhelmed that kind of uh, i know of number of people and it's so touching so touching i mean there is something that's why the lord came here and i mean of all the places he chose this as the seat of his tapasya it's not a joke <laughs> so what did he see what did shirbindo see <clears throat> over past where the leaden formulas of the mind so formulas of the mind is can be cannot be ifs and buts they are all over past because mind is what it's just a form giver is is you know is like if your building is being constructed and you ask one of the workers tell us about the plan of the building and says sir please ask the supervisor <laughs> you go to the supervisor he say well i am executing this but the original the owner he and the designer they they have not told me everything they have just told me only this much so he doesn't know what the interior will be like what paint everything he doesn't know he just for the construction so mind is like that even higher ranges of mind should be the describes it as arch mason is mm. <laughs> arch mason is masons who are you know laying the they are giving form but if you ask these uh, gods even you have built this body human what is going to dwell in it <laughs> they will say please that only the lord of lords told what do we know we are just giving forms and then one day the lord says okay done now i am going to give the final touches so the formulas of the mind all that mind has conceived you know because very often we try to pit this with that shastra this philosophy this thinker shubhendra is a gentleman so he doesn't ever say oh i have seen it you keep quiet but sometimes um, i have said it like this to people somebody saying you know shirbindo says this but in my opinion so i said please excuse me <laughs> <laughs> opinions don't count where there is the vision from the highest opinions have a meaning when we are at the realm of opinion there are different 
planes of everything. There is a plane of opinions where we have opinions. And we all know that opinions are nothing but ignorance. But we all have our opinions. We feel very happy about our opinions. <laughs> and Shobindo says that opinion has nothing to do with truth. At one place he says logic is the worst enemy of truth. <laughs> oh, that plate of consciousness yes. where all the formulas, structures, systems, philosophy have collapsed. You are trying to put it against, you know, vis-a-vis -vis Bertrand Russell's philosophy. And so it's, you know, like that. And, so, and so often I hear, I can't agree with mother. Uh -huh. Okay, don't agree. <laughs> don't agree. <laughs> Perfectly fine. <laughs> what difference will it make to the divine? If there has to be a difference, you are the one who is, you know, what a beautiful opportunity. And I tell you in this world, otherwise, even spirituality doesn't give us hope for this world. If it is just an escape and nirvana, what, what kind of absurdity is it? And what a hope, you know, Logically, one should be willing to put everything at stake for this one thing, which whatever time it takes is the one thing worth trying and attempting. I am saying very impersonally, even if you don't have that kind of full faith. But, oh, there is a possibility worth putting everything at stake. Because other than that, there is nothing which is worth it. At least nothing worth the labor of our humanity. I would feel absurd. <laughs> Either sitting for some uh, nirvana, which makes no sense of this world, or doing good, or doing some, you know, building a big house and buying Mercedes, it's all meaningless. Or being a philanthropist. Building, being a philanthropist. <laughs> you are only perpetuating your ignorance. <laughs> so, so that's the plane from which he is seeing. Overpowered the obstacle of mortal space. Because you know, normally what do we see? We see within space. Material space. But there are other space time where events are being formed. Before they precipitate here, they are formed in the subtle physical. They are passing through the vital. Beyond that, the higher mind. That's where the, you know, the gods who control our destiny, they get the command, the word, create this scene. So they look for material, create a scene. And then we find ourselves. But it is going beyond all that. It's literally beyond the, those who, have to enact out a scroll of destiny. You know, normally these form makers, they will just create the stage. Okay, what do you want? This lightning, that. So they'll create a stage. But they don't know the entire script. And now here is Shurbindo watching the entire play, entire script. The unfolding image showed the things to come. So it is showing what is going to happen in the future. And now we see what one has known but doesn't want to acknowledge. That before the dance of Parvati, Lasya, its new creation, Lasya, there is the dance of Shiva, Tandava, which destroys. And without destruction, there can be no new creation. So those who are afraid of destruction, they are afraid of new creation. Any form, even a battlefield, if you think, oh, it is very bad, if you shrink from it, then you are really saying that let things continue as they are. Sometimes mankind has to go through battle. Can't help it. Kurushetra is the law of life. And Shubhindu reminds us even in everyday life, every step you take, you tread upon many insects, creatures. Don't even, we don't even realize. You know, some of the Jain sadhus, they don't put their feet on ground. Why? Because it will kill. But they have found a novel way. So they'll put some cloth or something or uh, patta and then you put your feet. As if people below the patta, people <laughs> I'm saying will not die. Like in Le Ladakh, the Buddhists eat yak. Because they don't find other things don't grow, so they are permitted. Yak eating is permissible. It's not considered an offense. So human mind has found various ways of... It's a fact. If you are living every breath, even if you put a mask over your face, you are still breathing. With every breath, you are destroying countless creatures. We really go. You can't. That's how okay. you are part of a chain. The thing is, there should be no conscious will for injury. That is non-violence. Yes. You're not wanting to consciously, willfully destroy because it's going to give you a selfish advantage. But where it's a larger good, destinies of nations at stake. You can't keep your hands clean. 
Mother asks us to take a leap into the unknown. Yes. So, there is a dance of Shiva which he sees. A giant dance of Shiva tore the past. What has to go, has to go. And there is an experience of the mother about Shiva, where Shiva asked the mother, mother asked him, all the gods, would you tie to a human body to help in the new creation? But they had also gathered, Jagat Janani is doing a new Leela. They used to come when mother would sit for meditation. So she says, none of the gods agreed except Krishna, who agreed to tie himself to Sri <laughs> Shiva, he said, I won't take a human body now, but in the supramental world, I'll come and take a body. But I can help you. So what is the help? He says, I can break the physical ego, which is so difficult. And mother says, I needed, I was grappling with it. And he started dancing and breaking the physical ego. And the mother goes and tells Sri you know, I have a very funny feeling. All my cells are scattering into the vast. It's so delightful. Sri says, no, not yet. And the whole experience stopped. Much later, in 61, she would experience this after the supramental manifestation. And then she would connect with that experience and say, now the time was ripe for the physical ego to be dissolved. <laughs> no, not yet. So, giant dance of Shiva. Shiva is the great destroyer, the inconscient creator he is called. And he is also called as the lord of transformation because unless you destroy, you can't make room for the new creation. There was a thunder as of worlds that fall. We can't uh, imagine what it would be. Earth was overrun with fire and the roar of death. Clamoring to slay a world his hunger had made. Very interesting lines. And actually you see, I keep reminding, if you see all the avatar saint sages, if you see the maximum darkness ever in the history of earth, you will see it during the late 19th, I mean 1800 end and the first half of the 1900, 20th century. You see it, it's there. I mean, two great wars where millions of people died. Epidemics, imperialism, positivism, Freudianism, you name it and the Asuras were ruling. Nowhere, no, no point of time in history you will see this kind of darkness. But during that time, when the world is engulfed in darkness, Sri is writing Savitri invoking the sun of the future. Because he saw this as the giant dance of Shiva. In one of his uh, letters to mother in Japan, he writes that, um, no, not to mother. Mother, he wrote something else of the battle. But later on, he says to one of the disciples, it took mother and myself 10 years to clear the past of the earth. They had to do this. And that was working through the two world wars. Working through, through the two wars. Through Stalin. Yeah, yeah, all this. And to mother he writes, the whole world is vibrating with that same thing and there is nowhere where one can find respite. The whole earth is responding to one single law, the law of destruction and darkness. And then he says that um, uh, about his own yoga, sadhana, he says, uh, my own sadhana is something like the trench warfare of Europe. Where you make one inch advance and you are pushed back another inch. Trench warfare, you know, when you <laughs> the two enemies are entrenched. And time to time they emerge and fire shots and they again go into the trenches. You know, like that border movie towards the end. Somebody will dare to go out, but he may be shot. So that kind of trench warfare, Sri is describing his own state of yoga because he's taking the whole earth. He says that one inch forward. One inch backward, that is how the yoga. So that is the part, three, four lines, then we'll stop. So death has built a world in its fellow. So what can be destroyed, whatever is given to the abyss. Mother gave the same message, you know. Uh, men, countries, continents, the choice is imperative, truth or the abyss. So somebody asked, what is abyss? 
and then she says that right now there is much hypocrisy and duplicity and deceit in international dealings she speaks that and then she says that the abyss is lust for power and greed for money this is abyss so if you have these but then she says but for the aspirant of the yoga there is nothing to fear somebody who has given himself to truth what is there to fear but these two things power and money are the abyss he speaks of that so death has created these things and it will devour it is as log- simple as that there was a clangor of destruction's wings the titans battle cry was in my ears alarm and rumor shook the armored night so that's the first part of the unfolding image but there is another part through this dance of destruction something beautiful is also going to take place so we'll read it coming saturday it's nice as we decided we'll go a little slow in this canto because it's one of the pivotal cantos and very beautiful and powerful